Hey guys, review coming up in just a moment, but first I want to let you know that I'm starting something new. I'm going to be putting little endings to the different uh, longer reviews, not the one minute ones, but after the end of a long review like this one, I'm going to highlight something new and different that has nothing to do with the review, but involves a watch, a watch face, an update, an issue that's solved, or an issue that's just emerged. So make sure you check the very end of the long reviews from now on, in case there's something important to share with you, which there is today involving this watch face. So check it out at the end of the review. Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We are a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com and DT number one has sent out a bunch of new watches uh, that they've been producing. This is probably the best of all of them because it's got enough memory to hold quite a few watch faces and it's called the DT98 and before I open the box and surprise you with what's inside I'll surprise you with what they say in print at their actual AliExpress DT number one store they show the picture and they say, gift, an extra band, and it's true. Here's a metal band, here's a TPU band. You're going to see all that as we unbox it in just a minute. This is the uh, AliExpress store, and those of you who prefer to buy through Banggood, we also have a link for you from Banggood for the same watch, the DT98. Check the show notes for a discount coupon on it as well. In terms of specs, let's take a look. We've got a full round HD screen. It's um, claiming ECG heart rate and blood oxygen monitoring. Now, I don't want to get on my soapbox too high, but if you're concerned and interested, uh, look at the review of the DT28 um, uh, from number one regarding ECG and whether or not it's real or faked. And this is the same situation. We have the ECG claim, and it's using the Fundu app for tethering, and it says it has the heart rate monitor in it. Um, but I'm going to tell you, it doesn't. So when you look at this watch, look at everything else except the ECG. Don't buy this one for the ECG, but if you like everything else about it, you're good to go. Full touch screen, all these different languages, IP68 waterproof, support for everything you see there. It's got the G sensor, heart rate sensor, a 1.3 inch screen, 240 by 240 pixel, pretty standard. 300 milliamp hour battery with a uh, standby time of a full week and a use time of three days, which is good. Two hours to charge your basic magnetic charger and so forth. So when we open the box, inside look at this presentation it's really great they're taking some lessons from the really brand name uh folks who put a lot of time energy and money into the packaging you see the watch boom right there then we lift up the card and see that the watch is just sitting on the card isn't that cool it's got a little plastic cover on it that we can peel off like that and we can bring the watch out of its little holder. Now, you see how we have the two ECG plates here and a metal case. So all indications are we should be able to do a real ECG. We'll check that out. That's the case itself. Then you've got two little places that you can open by lifting. When you get in here, wow, here we go. You've got a beautiful metal band and a TPU style band with um, looks like carbon fiber finish on the outside and rubberized underneath. Really nice. We've got uh, another little card insert. We lift up here and we've got the charging connector, which is your standard four pin. Yep, four pin connector that connects like so. It's good enough to hold the, the at least hold the watch without the band on it. And then we've got the overall manual. So let's take a look at the manual. And it looks like English is our first language. So that's good. A couple of warnings. The side button to turn it on. The charging information. 
There's the QR code for downloading the Fundu. It's now Fundu Pro. There were of quite a few varieties, but Fundu Pro is the one that you'll be using. And we have a link in the show notes for that. And uh, you put that in your phone and then you tether uh, directly to it, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, some more information. Here's the ECG. Talks about that. Okay. And setting up. About 30 seconds can show the data. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I challenge any of you to show me an ECG chart generated by the Fundu app that does not look identical to every other chart generated by that app. The day I see something unique and different that I can wiggle my finger around and make it go up and down and change, then I'll believe that we're getting an ECG. But for right now, it appears to be a uh, canned simulation. There are all the other languages, and that is the manual. So at this point, we're going to charge it up, put a set of bands on it. I'll just put the TPU ones on, but definitely take a look at how classy that would look with the silver band on it. This is a very fancy one. You got also the bag of pins, too, so that uh, you uh, have the quick disconnect um, pins that match the proper size that comes with the bag uh, and with the box as well. All right, we'll be right back. Well, here it is, and it's actually a really beauty of a watch. Very nice bezel, carbon fiber bottom, same thing integrated into the band that we've got on this one. Nice. However, I want to finish debunking the whole issue related to ECG. This is the Fundu app. When I come over here to the more, you see down here it talks about ECG detection and that you're supposed to just simply touch the screen. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to bring up ECG. I'm going to touch the screen. Now, you see there's a line starting to uh, emerge there on the actual watch face itself. And if you look real carefully, it's just going to repeat itself over and over again. In the meantime, over here on the actual um, app itself, after a few seconds, it's going to start creating what looks like an ECG chart. You've got a simulated chart here. And folks, you got a simulated uh, chart there. If you've seen my other reviews, you know if I move my finger around, it interrupts the whole thing and makes all kinds of jitter noise on there. Not so at this point. And it's just going to go on giving me my heart rate, which you see down at the bottom is 64.3 right now. Um, and the simulated red line on the screen itself. You've got the time of day at the top. And you've got this chart continuing to emerge down here. Now, if I take my finger off, it's going to terminate it. But it records everything that I did. And if I save you report, I get this. Now, I invite you guys to look at any of the apps I've done, any of the reviews using the Fundu app with devices that use ECG. And you'll find that these are all exactly the same. So... For ECG, the only thing you get out of this is a heart rate, and I'm pretty sure it's the same heart rate that you're getting when you go in here using the green diodes. There's nothing new, there's nothing to see here, and there's certainly nothing to rely on medically for um, it, your heart condition with respect to electrocardiograph information. There's no electrode in the screen, and it's not computing an honest, real ECG chart. Now let's start over and look at everything else about this watch. Okay, when you turn it on, it's got a watch face in here and you can press and hold and cycle through a bunch of them, which we'll do later. When you swipe down, you see your Bluetooth connection, battery level, and whether or not you want sound active or inactive. And it's kind of misleading uh, when you activate the no sound, making it lit up then it's in silent mode, I think. Or maybe it's the other way around. This for sure, when it's lit up, it means Bluetooth is active. And sorry if it's kind of washed out on the screen, the watch is so bright and you can see it easily outdoors that it, it's hard to, to see it with the camera here indoors. So we got to that by swiping up. You get to that by swiping down. It's a circle loops between the two. If you go to the left from the watch face, you're gonna to get to heart rate and go again and you get back to the watch face. So that loops. Now, if you go to the right and you go right again, 
that loops. And this is your app drawer. So you have all these things, messaging, phone book, and call logs, and dialer that are all related to Bluetooth tethering to the Fundu app well, actually, not to the Fundu app. These four things are tethered directly to the phone itself, as if you were hooking up a Bluetooth headset. Two kinds of Bluetoothing going on. The phone stuff is directly connected to the phone itself, and everything else in the app is done by tethering to the Fundu app which includes a bunch of stuff in here. Now, we've got a sports section and your overall pedometer count, which you saw some of the numbers on here. When I go back to, oh, it's trying to play that ECG simulation again. Go back to the center. There's my uh, step count. That's the pedometer information right here. The ECG we just did, and then you've got the heart rate, which we also saw when we flipped off to the left. So we'll come back to sport in a moment. Notice this goes in groups. I've got a blood pressure reading that I can do here and an overall sleep monitor. That's all part of the stuff that you can archive in your analysis and your reports in the app. Then you've got your sedentary reminder if you want uh, to notify you to get up periodically and blood oxygen on this one as well. It's blood pressure, sleep monitor, blood oxygen, all related. Then you get notifications that you set up to push from the phone to the watch. Bluetooth music control here so that you can control the music. Bluetooth camera so you can take a remote picture from your phone using the watch as a trigger. And then the actual Bluetooth uh, connection link to set up like uh, headphones or something with this and search for a new device when you get into that. Then you get into this motion detection. That's your twist the wrist to see the time type of thing. Uh, muting an incoming call, muting an alarm, your wrist wake-up gesture, um, and that's off, so I'm going to turn that on. I usually like that on. And then shaking uh, switch to do something, I don't know, minimize something, and shake to answer a phone call. So all those are different motions that you can do. Themes are your basic backgrounds for this page it's a wallpaper behind it do you want it cluttered with bubbles or do you want it plain black that's all there a basic calendar setting your alarms a stopwatch is built into this you've got a calculator as well and then you've got app which is the app qr code that you scan to download the fundu app to put on your phone of course we got a link in the show notes down below that covers that one and then your overall settings, which when you get in here is your Bluetooth settings. If you're having trouble pairing, and I have been, and it hasn't kicked in when I've come back automatically, it said disconnected, and I've had to disconnect it formally by saying totally forget it, and then come back in and link it again. Before it would link it again, I had to turn the power off on Bluetooth settings and then turn it back on on the watch before setting it up to tether again on the app. That's a little trick when it's not behaving well to get you tethered properly, okay? Then here's new notifications. Um, you can turn that on or off if you want to get notifications. Your overall sounds that will ring or whatever for notification and ringtone. And then uh, your volume for all of those too, where six is the loudest on all of them. And it's kind of soft on this watch from what I've, I've heard. Here's your overall display brightness. We're at four. I'm going to lower that down way down here now to like, there's one. Now, notice this is kind of a yellow like the phone. If I pump this puppy all the way up, look how that washed out. You can't even see the word OK. And that's a, a trick with the camera. And so I can't really show you what brightness is like. I can just simply tell you that outdoors, if you have it all the way up, it's going to be good and bright. This one is something you can use outdoors and it'll work well. And I talked too long and it timed out on us. Sorry about that. We're back into settings. We just did display. You can set units for metric or imperial here. And of course, you can reset the watch and get about, which tells you the device name and some of the other stuff. When you tether it, you're looking for a smartwatch, okay? You're not looking for DT98 or any of that stuff. It's the word smartwatch. Good luck if you have others that have used smartwatch as well. You won't know which one it is unless you look at the LE address or the device address, I forget which one it is. I think it's the LE that will show up here and make sure that some of those numbers match and then you're tethering the correct thing. So that's all of the stuff in settings. And I believe 
Oh no, no, we got another page. Let's see. It's going to whip, whip us around, but it's not. We have uh, languages. You can set it to automatically change to the language of your device. Uh, change the name list to last name first. I'm not going to go through all of the languages. That's in the uh, specs. Find your device is when you tap this and hit start. And I have this in silent mode right now, but it's actually ringing it. See, it says cancel ring. Uh, so you find your phone, and likewise, you can trigger this to find your, your uh, watch as well. Your overall display, this is the brightness and screen out I've set for 60 uh, seconds. Boy, I was talking long if it timed out on me there. And then that last one was uh, dial selection, which is the same thing we get when we press and hold, and we'll go through those probably next, because that looped us back to the beginning. So you have groups of four and it jumps four at a time. It's not smooth, and that threw me off for a long time there. It's like, what the heck? I can't zero in on it, but it works that way. Blood oxygen is normally, in the high advanced watches, done with red diodes and infrared. Um, this one's getting you your blood oxygen with green diodes, see? So the reading's not gonna be as high and as accurate as it could be on some of the other ones we've reviewed that are using the proper diodes for getting you accurate blood oxygen. But then again, this one's not gonna predict sleep apnea or any of the other aspects that go along with having a really good blood oxygen reader on it. It's giving you your basic percentage. 95 and higher, you're alive, okay? Um, the blood pressure. Uh, same kind of thing. We're using the green diodes, come here you, to uh, calculate the blood pressure. And it, it is turning them off when you're not touching it, so at least it's sensing that you're there. And it, uh, it's an interesting one on this now. This is systolic over diastolic, and you know in the doctor's office they do the cuff and they, they do this and the pressure goes way up. And then they use the telescope and telescope, the stethoscope, <laughs> and they listen for your heartbeat as they let the air out of the thing. Well, this is behaving similar to that as if you had a cuff on, it looks like. I mean, it's up there so much that I should be exploding about now. Went to 190 and now it's starting to come down. This is not how it's working, folks. It doesn't do this. <laughs> there's no pressure, there's no cuff. And it's just a simulation to pretend that you're getting that same kind of doctor office effect. Okay, it zeroed in on 119 over 79. That sounds realistic. I don't know if it's accurate. I give you the disclaimer, especially the way they're handling ECG. I challenge the ethics of the, of the companies, both DT number one and Fundu, on presenting false data on ECGs to the public and masquerading it as real. So I'm not going to say anything about the blood pressure. You're on your own on that one. Heart rate, you can't really screw that up too bad. Blood oxygen, 95 or higher and you're alive. And I think that pretty much covers it. Okay, uh, the, the watch faces are the last thing. We've got a selection of a few of them. I'm not going to show them all, but here's a nice... Wow, it's, it's still too bright. It's a nice light blue with digital time and analog on here at the same time. Some busy analog ones. Here's one that's just like a pure digital if you want that, but it's not um, white, it's uh, colored. But it's, it's a bright color, so it should be easy to see outdoors. Another one, another one, here's another one, here's another digital type. Here's a really bright one if you want to use this thing for a flashlight outside. Uh, have this one on and just turn it on and it'll probably light up your way, that's for sure. It's going on and off now because I have the twist your wrist to turn it on. And it's not really a twist your wrist, it's a hold it horizontal and it will light up. If you turn it a little bit off horizontal in any direction, it's going to go off. That's really bad if you're in some other function like blood pressure or heart rate. And you have to literally keep your arm like this in order for it not to just go off. So something to take into consideration if you're going to use that uh, feature on here. Here's one that's a little dimmer blue with some uh, digital writing on it and a nice bright green one and another digital one. Anyway, there's a lot of different watch faces and that's one of the nicest features of this one over the other ones we will be reviewing that only have a couple of watch faces. This one's got quite a few. Anything else you want to see? Removable bands? 
nice seal we've got the uh, carbon fiber look right along the edge uh, metal bezel metal plates it should be able to do real ECG and someday hopefully if it's really working in the watch the app will catch up to it and you'll actually get a good ECG reading but not today today though if you want this one I can tell you to head on over to uh, the DT number one actual official sco uh, store at AliExpress uh, they've got it on special right now 20% uh, off and if I have any coupons for you, I'll have these down in the show notes because I also have it uh, from Banggood. And we have a listing for you there too. So check the show notes, check the buying links, see what they're selling for because the prices are always changing. And come on back. We're going to have more goodies here soon. Thanks for subscribing and watching it all the way to the end. Now here's that special treat I promised at the beginning. Alrod has been working on a variety of new watch faces. This is the Lympho LEM10. We've seen that before. And he's given us a few nice ones like this one. But he's also broken the code for doing um, responsive watch faces with complications that activate when you touch them. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of what he and I have been going back and forth on because I want to premiere it. In a while, I'll be doing a full-on video talking about what he's doing and how he's doing it for those of you watch developers who also want to get into playing with uh, complications. But for now, just check it out. Here's a round watch face intended for a round watch, like, are you ready for the reveal? The new Cospet Vision. That's right, this is the new one with the highlighted red all around it and the watch face that Alrod has created. Now I'm showing it to you now because unfortunately in this class of watch um, the complications do not work. There's a bug and we're trying to debug it frantically right now to get them working again but for all the other watches before the new ones which include this one, uh, the Janus, uh, the uh, Lockmet uh, X360 and probably future ones we're going to have to work a little bit because uh, there's some breakdown on it. And there's also some other serious problems. Like this one has a floating toucher installed. You know that app. Uh, it's the little dot that you see right there that if I touch it will bring up a screen that I can do things. It's an overlay. It's in here, but it will not show up on top of the watch face. So that's broken too. They've done something to Android 711 in the newest watches that's prohibiting overlay activity for touching the screen. But if you've got an earlier version of any of the uh, Android uh, watches, you could definitely install Alrod's new ones. Now, like I said, this is designed for a round face. And if I touch something like the calendar here, it brings it up. Same thing would happen for any of these, heart rate and so forth. But this is a rectangular watch. So here's one of Alrod's creations specifically made for the LEM10. You got the date, the time, you've got a simulated uh, heart rate thing going, step count, distance traveled, and buttons across the bottom. In this case, you can activate the phone if you've got a SIM card in it, music player, heart rate, and of course you can bring up your fitness, choose what you'd like to do, and begin doing it right from the watch face. Nice, huh? So that was a good start, and then he got creative. The next phase, going back to round, was to enhance the, uh, all of the different widgets that are on here or complications, and all of the dots that you see are active. This is the music player. There's um, battery down here. What happens when we press that? We get the uh, Google Voice, which is listening right now to respond to me. Uh, we have camera, so you can go immediately into selfie or set things up for uh, video chat. You got the calendar, your phone, the temperature, weather, heart rate, and uh, your overall step count information and um, your workout stuff right there. All of that, all on this round screen. But wait, wait, this is what? An LEM10. It's rectangular, so with a little bit more effort. Alrod's managed to stretch it out and make this thing absolutely ideal, get a nice brightness there for you, for the Lympho LEM10. 
Where do you get these things? Check the show notes. I've got the link to Alrod's information. Uh, it's works in progress. He's releasing new ones all the time. Custom for all different kinds of watches. Round Android and now, of course, square rectangular Android watches. And we're working on getting it to work on the newest ones. But in the meantime, like the Cospet, uh, what are they? The Hope and the Brave and the Optimus and all of those uh, work fine with the uh, complications, just like you see it on the LEM 10. Cool, huh? Now remember, in future videos, check the very end because I'm going to be adding little tidbits onto all of the longer videos to make them insanely long. <laughs> oh well, that's what we do, right? All right, see you again.